A while back, uh, I made a video where I set out to make softline tubing look as good as hardline tubing while maintaining all the perks you get by just using softline tubing. And uh, I kind of succeeded in the sense that I proved that it was possible to use a 3D printer to give softline tubing like a backbone. I pretty much failed in every other aspect. When, While it did look unique, it was pretty ugly and it wasn't easy to install or remove, which kind of negated the whole reason of doing it. But you guys gave me a lot of good feedback and I've been grinding away to try to improve my design in a way to create something that not only looks good, but goes in and out easily. The whole reason that I'm doing this anyway. Now, did I underestimate how much engineering was required to pull this off? Yes. Did I think about how long it would take to print all this out? Of course not. Are my fingers incredibly sore from twisting feet upon feet of wiring? Severely. But in the end, I think it was worth it. Oh, and did I mention I added RGB? This is what I've been doing for the last week. Designing, printing, fitting, tweaking, printing, wiring over and over again to be left with this. This is what I think is the first custom water cooling loop to have RGB backlit softline tubing configured to look like hardline tubing. And while obviously not perfect and maybe not for everybody, I think it looks striking. Now I did say in the last video that this was easier than hardline tubing. However, after undertaking this project, I'm not so sure. Now I've never done any hardline tubing or any builds with hardline tubing yet, but I know how much work this was and I cannot foresee in any way possible that hardlining can be tougher than this. But don't get discouraged if you have a 3D printer and you want to give this a shot, I'm going to create some stock sizes and bends that you can download. Truth be told, the hardest part of this whole deal was tweaking the design and then figuring out a good way to install and wire the RGB. So you take the RGB away and it really isn't that bad. The new design is a C profile. Many of you commented on my last video that I should have used this design from the get go. And after reading those comments, I was like, wow, how, how did I miss that? And now that we're using this design, all of this right here could be removed in seconds. And then I would just simply have a soft line build that I could do with all the maintenance I needed to. And then boom, snap all that back into place and it looks nice, nice straight lines. It kind of looks like hard line tubing plus RGB. For the RGB, I use five millimeter, four pin, common anode LEDs. And if I was to do this again, I would look for a better option. Not because they didn't work, because obviously they did. Uh, they actually look quite good. 
except if you try to turn them to white, then they just go red. But other than that, it was just too much wiring. So if you know of a good like micro RGB strip or uh, tube type of deal, let me know in the comments down below because if I'm gonna do any f future RGB projects, I don't wanna do it this way, too much wiring. To attach the RGB, I found it easier to make this an assembly, one part being the tube guide, the other part being uh, an RGB cable track. This made it easier to basically wire up all the RGB lights and then once I was able to see them working, I just simply snapped them right over the tube guide. Along my tube guide, I spaced the RGB lights at 20 millimeters center to center, with the exception being the GPU to monoblock, given that's such a small run. I made that out of five 10 millimeter segments, which placed the RGBs at about 10 millimeters center to center, which I actually like better because it makes the light uh, more uniform. There's no, you don't see as many hot spots. So if I was to do it again, 10 millimeters center to center is probably the best for these type of RGB lights. All the runs, again, are two-piece designs like they were before, with the exception, like we said, from the GPU to monoblock, and then actually from the radiator to the reservoir. That's also one piece. It's such a small run that I was able to knock it out one print. To wire the RGBs, I ran four lengths of 16 gauge solid copper wires down those little tracks I made in the cable track. Then I ran the pigtails through that cable track and then twisted them around the main lines and then added a little bit of solder to secure them. Initially, I was kind of worried about soldering on or that close to PLA. I figured it's just gonna heat the wire up and just melt it. But surprisingly, didn't have an issue. It actually worked uh, pretty well. Then in order to run all these RGBs from my motherboard, I ran them to basically a standard four pin uh, cable. I cut it and then wired them up to the main lines and added a 430 ohm resistor to the common anode so I could take that 12 volt down a little bit so I didn't just blow the doors off these LEDs as soon as I plugged them in. And now they are hooked to my motherboard. Right now I have like a UV green going on. I got everything kind of showing like a purple black light and then the tubing set to green, but I could change it right now if you want me to. Just gotta go, just gotta get my RGB fusion uploaded. So if you did this on your motherboard, basically whatever you're using uh, for a motherboard should work just fine. You wanna change them, you just do it like any other RGB. So I'll just set it to color cycle. And uh, there you go, you just have it run all the colors you want, or lack thereof. I really like the, uh, the UV color though, so we'll go back to that. Another issue I ran into, and you might also, was long run. So this one, from basically the monoblock all the way up to the radiator, it's quite a big run, so it had a tendency to want to droop in the front. In order to get around that, I had to 3D print uh, some C-clips, I guess you'd call them, that go around the tube guide and then the fitting, and it just keeps them concentric with one another. I didn't need them on these short ones because they just pretty much stay exactly where you want them, but if you're gonna do a nice big long run with lots of bends, I would recommend printing out some sort of you know, support to keep them you know, concentric, at least at the start, and you can kind of go where you need to go. Another thing, if you're gonna actually go for this and you're gonna do RGB as well, you might consider covering the back of the tubing up. Now. I left mine exposed because I kind of like how it looks. It's got like an industrial look to it. Um, I did use a resistor, so I dropped that 12 volts down to around three volts. So I don't really have a fear of it shorting anything, but if you do, if you have a fear that something might touch something it's not supposed to, just cover up those, you know, those copper wires on the backside, you should be all right. But as long as I'm not in there fiddling around with anything, it should be good. The coolant I use is just simple distilled water, and I ended up uh, taking a bit more of your advice and sanding down my tubing to give it like a nice opaque finish and that way it kind of diffuses the light better. If I do find like a really nice looking opaque fluid, I might swap all these out to clear lines and see how that looks. But for now, this gives me the desired effect that I was looking for. And that's pretty much it. I won't say it was easy, but it's, but I think it was worth it. And if it is something that I do believe that if you have a printer, you are definitely able to do something like this and I can help. So go to my Thingiverse account and I'm gonna, well first, subscribe to my channel and then go to my Thingiverse account and I will upload some models to get you going and you can at least have a starting point. You can take what I have, uh, do the same design, tweak it to whatever you need. And as always, if you have um, an idea for a video or you want something, or if you have something you just wanna see me do, give me a shout out down below. I'll check it out and if it's something good, we'll try it out. But until next time, catch you later.